encourage your soul, enlighten your mind, and empower your faith. This is The Light Network. If you want to be a serious Bible student, a successful servant, and a powerful preacher, this is the podcast for you. Hello and welcome to Preachers in Training. My name is Robert Hatfield, and this is the podcast on which we discuss all things preaching and ministry. We return to our mailbag, if you will. We're looking at listener requested topics here as we do pretty much every episode. Uh, I'm so grateful for all of the requests that you send in here on season 16, episode three. We're talking about study techniques in non biblical resources. All right. That's the the way that the listener has requested this. So that's the title that we've uh, given. We do have a little bit of a a caveat here because uh, whoever you are, dear listener, who requested this, you mentioned this uh, as an elaboration of of that topic. Study techniques in non-biblical resources, i.e. reading books versus podcasts, videos, etc. And then he said, reading is important to the preacher, but today we have so many more choices like podcasts, listening to other preachers, sermons, and the like, is one media more beneficial than the other? Here to help us today in discussing that is Brad McNutt. He's the host of the book club here on the Light Network, as well as the uh, preacher for the Moulton Church of Christ in Moulton, Alabama. No stranger to us here at Preachers in Training. Welcome back, Brad. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Glad you're here. Um, uh, you dabble in in the media, <laughs> in, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. In terms of research and all of that, right? I mean, you're always sending videos and things, YouTube videos and stuff, of sermons you've listened to and all that to yeah. several of us that are in our little text message group. Um, and and some other not so sermon stuff, but it's and okay. some other not so sermon <laughs> stuff. It's good to keep it light, <laughs> non biblical resource, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, it's good. It, you know, media overload, maybe maybe more in our generation, certainly than in previous generations, just just from the prevalence and the growth of YouTube alone, right. um, there, there's a lot to it. And, and in as much as you can Google how to repair things around your house and stuff like that and find videos, you can also Google and find videos for sermon topics and, and all that stuff. And, of course, especially post-COVID, everybody was forced to do the live stream thing mm-hmm. or at the very least some kind of online content. And so you can pretty much check in with anybody, especially around the United States, and hear sermons and all that stuff. Uh, information overload almost, right? Absolutely. It's been, uh, you know, a number of people have expressed concern. And, uh, these people are experts. I'm definitely not, but they've expressed concern with the ability to access so much information our breadth of knowledge grows but our depth of thinking is actually shrinking Mm. because we surface whereas in previous generations you know you had certain books and uh, you read them many times over because you couldn't afford others or you didn't have others and so you learn to think very deeply Mm. and solidify what you knew whereas now it's read one book or something and throw it to the side and uh, move on to the next one and may never read it again. Mm-hmm. So the, the depth of knowledge and the depth of um, analysis isn't quite the same with the breadth of knowledge. So uh, sounds like blessings and curses. Sure. <laughs> and it's really up to us, right, to yeah. to ensure that we, part, part of the difficulty for me, because I want to use my time the best way I can. And so you know, I mean, there, there are so many options. Sometimes it's just overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Well, let's dive into this a little bit and let's start with the with the book component to this, because when we talk about study techniques in non-biblical resources, I mean, yeah, there are podcasts and videos and that kind of stuff, but there are also, of course, many, many books, some about the Bible, some, of course, just aren't. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm assuming if we're talking about study techniques, we're studying the Bible probably for sermons and Bible classes. So non-biblical resources would then be a, a book that is about the Bible, but isn't the Bible. <laughs> if sure. we're talking about written written media, um, uh, our shelves are filled with with these sorts of books. <laughs> your, exactly. your podcast is nothing but uh, these sorts of books. Exactly. Um, 
<clears throat> so uh, this is a whole thing in and of itself. I mean, you've been doing book club for 10 years now. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, what tips? I mean, I'm going to ask you a really broad question here. I mean, study techniques in non-biblical books, that is to say books about the Bible, but that are not the Bible. Uh, how do you want to go from there? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, well, I might start with um, a commentary. If we're thinking like uh, uh, for a sermon or for a textual class or something. I use commentaries probably the most of any of the books in my library. Is that oh, you too? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. It, <clears throat> for me, when I do those things, one of the things that you want to, um, Sorry, Alexa has decided that she wanted to take my request there. Um, <laughs> now she's ordering books off of Amazon. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so but anyway, when it comes to commentaries, you've got different tiers of commentaries, right? You've got some popular level. Uh, you've got some of the, kind of the middle of the road, and then you get into the critical and the exegetical uh, sides. And so for me personally, when I'm studying a text, when I'm teaching, as a matter of fact, I see over my shoulder, I've got three books over here on Kings. Um, when I'm studying a text, I like to look at books from those three tiers. I begin with a popular level, a general overview, and then I go to the next layer that gets a little bit deeper. And then I read a more critical one. And what that does, number one, it gives me three different perspectives on the text. And uh, but it also you can see them interact because many times they're going to have different viewpoints on things. And so you see the interaction. What happens sometimes, especially I can think about when I was younger, I would read a commentary and just think, oh, well, that argument is perfect and then run with it. Whereas if I had realized and just simply read another book that was sitting right next to it on the shelf, I would have seen that this person mm -hmm. addresses that issue and then explains the problems with that issue and gives a better solution. And so when you select those different levels, you have three different minds. And uh, as one person called them, they're your conversational companions. Yeah. They're just kind of talking and studying with you uh, in the text. And so uh, when I do it, I like to look around. Now, obviously, when I first started, I had to read every book in my office on the subject. Yeah. The only problem is it will absolutely drive you into the ground. And so, um, I read have 500 to, pages this week for this one <laughs> sermon. Yeah, exactly. And so you have to kind of know what you're looking for. For me, it's those three levels and three different approaches. And, mm -hmm. um, I can have that. And you definitely want, like, I like William Barclay's commentaries in many ways. My trouble with him is that I can't source out what he's saying. Mm. It gives a lot of good history, but I'm often hesitant because I can't source what he's saying. Oh, okay. And so with these other books, I want to look at a book that somebody is going to source what they're saying. I can trace it out and I can know whether the difference between their judgment on something. And this is something that is kind of been in peer review, critical research type method. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so with commentaries, that's, that's what I would do. Uh, now, when it comes to things like historical things like Josephus or Eusebius or Philo or something along those lines, I tread very carefully. I mean, I like to read those, but I also am very much a novice in that world. Mm -hmm. And um, so I will look up those references and I will try and read them and pay attention to them, but also see if I can find some kind of comments on that somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody that can guide me that's more familiar with that area. Mm -hmm. What you mentioned a minute ago is, is important about giving yourself permission to, to, to be a seat at the table of this commentary conversation, you know, exactly. not, not just reading it and then taking it, but, but having a conversation in that way, you know, do I agree with this? What, where are the holes in this logic or what about this? Or I want you to talk more about that. And I find myself sometimes writing those sorts of things out in the margin, you know, tell me more about this or, or you're operating off of an assumption that you didn't really prove, you know, yeah. so help me with that or something. I say uh, that quite a bit. You, mm -hmm. you may be right, but you did not connect the dots enough Yeah, in the yeah. way you presented it here. And that's where going next to the to the next tier that'll go a little deeper or maybe a little more scholarly may answer some mm -hmm. of those questions for you. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's good. 
Uh, so we got lots of types of books and things like that. I mean, uh, the assumption is right. It, when you're, when you're going to these non-biblical resources, you have at least read the text first <laughs> and, oh, and yes. hopefully you have some general direction of where you think you're headed. And then the commentaries are going to expand that or, or help you to know that you're in the right a realm <laughs> or ballpark. And, and <laughs> Play some of that may depend right sport. on yeah. if you have a handle on the original languages yeah. or just an original language, whether it's Hebrew, Greek, or Aramaic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, before I even went to a commentary, I would want to read the text in my English translation, and then I'd want to spend some time going through the original text if I have a handle on it. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of because there are things you can see there that sometimes don't always come out in English. But also what I've found is um, having to go through and translate the original text. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of forces you to slow down and pay attention to every single, I mean, if you've ever translated, it's painstaking detail. Mm. Um, and I'm not good at it at all. Uh, I'm just an elementary student when it comes to that, but uh, it does really open up some things. And then when you get into these commentaries, you have questions when you look at the original and many times they're going to talk about some of those things for you. Uh, um, an alternative to that, if you don't have a lot of that background or a lot of training, or if you hadn't used it in a while and so it's kind of gone, is open up your Bible software and just sort of hover over those, yep. you know, word by word. At the very least, you know, open up four or five translations and compare how they're similar and different. Um, and that helps a lot too. Just just that exercise of just spending that time with the text. Yeah, Helps a whole lot. Long day. Yeah. Um, what else do we need to say about books before we sort of go into other realms of media? Mm, I would. <laughs> <laughs> this is really broad. Well, we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're trying to address everything the listener has requested here. <laughs> I think uh, for me, and it kind of depends on where you are in ministry, right? Mm. Um, you know, if I had started out reading critical commentaries, like, it wouldn't have done me any good. Like I've, I've had to feel myself grow from one level to the next, to the next. And so, um, but at least even if they're popular level, at least see that they can source their material and they're not just something that they got off of Google somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately uh, that's what some books are. And um, so just make sure that whatever, you look into it's credible, it's traceable um, because for that to get out, like that information to get out that way, it, it had to be many times peer reviewed and you had to have multiple scholars who would be experts in those fields looking at them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's just a little bit firmer footing. It helps to bear in mind too, and, and nothing at all against the older works, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, in some cases these men were, going off of things they had read or things like that, particularly maybe about the geographic location or even historical, mm -hmm. uh, uh, information. And in, in, in some cases, those guys had not been to some of those places. They just didn't have the opportunity or mm -hmm. in other cases, you know, you, you may have somebody like a McGarvey, uh, for example, who, who did a lot of those travels, right? but of course, excavation, archeological work has continued. And not that there's anything major maybe that would like unsettle a lot of the convictions, particularly like right. in McGarvey's commentary on acts or whatever, but just there may be deeper information or, or things that could help further yeah. color, maybe the things that McGarvey wrote. So, yeah. yeah. And even the, like they were cutting edge for their time. And if yeah. they were alive right now, it's when you say scholarship is advancing, you're not saying the people that went before you are dumb. You're just That's saying a good point. we've yeah. got more information to work with now. And had they had this information, their books yeah. would reflect it. Yeah. They would have used it. <laughs> yeah. They used exactly what they had at the time. Yeah. I like the point you're making about intellectual honesty and, and, uh, just maybe general scholarship. I mean, we, we get it right. I mean, a sermon is, is not the same as presenting an academic paper. Right. Um, but if you, if you get information from somewhere and particularly if you're quoting someone, uh, do the right thing and cite where that came from at, at the very least to say McGarvey in his commentary on acts says, 
you know, whether you give the page number or whatever is up to you. If somebody, you know, wants more information, they can at least come up to you and say, Hey, well, tell me more about that McGarvey and X or whatever. But, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, do that and don't pretend like it's all your original thoughts when it's not. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially in the day of when you're, you talk about social media, when you're online and your sermons are posted online, That's right. you yeah. get into major copyright issues and mm -hmm. it could just be a disaster for you. Right. And plus it's just the right thing to do. Uh, our bearing in mind that more and more people have college degrees these days than maybe in the past. And, uh, you know, the millennial generation and, and Gen Z, they are interested in knowing that we have at least appropriately fact checked, <laughs> you know, oh, I mean, that, that's I mean, a big deal. It always has been, but I mean, it, it is especially now. Don't be surprised if they Google your sermon topic and go looking for it. There you go. It's actually legitimate or you just printed yeah. it off somewhere. Sometimes while you're preaching it. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, with, with that sort of there in the last 15 minutes, let's, let's switch gears now and talk a little bit about the other forms of media that are out there. Um, uh, what do you say to this podcast videoing and things like that? And maybe first we ought to mention the specific thing the listener said was reading books versus podcast videos and the like. Uh, what do you want to comment on that as we launch into this part of our conversation? Um, well, I mean, I'm a book guy, so you're obviously going to get an answer from that, <laughs> that uh, area. But um, I, I would caution anybody saying you have to pick one or the other. Um, I think the answer to all of these mediums is yes. Like we need to listen to sermons. We need to uh, listen to podcasts. We need to read. Uh, it's not really like an either or thing. And I think these medias are suited well for their individual approaches. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, we're blessed to be able to have this, that so we can listen to sermons from all over the world or uh, be able to, to read one of their sermons or a transcript or something, or listen to a podcast where people dive more deeply into certain things. But <clears throat> the research, as I understand it, remains pretty strong uh, on the side of reading. And uh, I'm not just saying that because I'm, I'm a book guy. That, that's where experts have done their studies. And, uh, you know, there are a number of different uh, essentials. I think one of the first things you have to pay attention to is that when God chose to communicate with us, he chose to use words on a written page. Um, now, I understand that <clears throat> in that time, a lot of people were not extremely literate. And, and uh, when you look at, say, Robert Alter's works about Hebrew narrative and things along those lines, a lot of those things, people heard those words more than they perhaps read them. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, we should pay attention to the fact that he's using words and um, that it is an inscripturated revelation. Mm. And we're part of something that has a book that has to be studied and has to be read in order to be understood. And so uh, I think there are some things there we need to pay attention to. Um, some of the <clears throat> research that I have come across, and I don't, again, no expert in that, but some of the research I've come across, obviously reading versus um listening to a podcast or listening to something else, uh, your level of focus, it is proven is completely different. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just absolutely different. And I'm not, uh, you know, I, I have an audible account. I listen to books. Um, for an example, they did a study in a university in a class where the people, the students divided up. You could either read the material or you could listen to uh, a lecture that had been turned into a podcast or something. And uh, <clears throat> the majority of them raised their hand to listen to the podcast instead of reading. Mm. Now, right before the test, he asked them, does anybody want to change their mind and we'll extend the test? Well, everybody wanted to change their mind then. Everybody wanted to go and read because the preparation from reading the book, the focus that comes with it is far different than when you're listening. It's really easy to get distracted. Um, and in reading, you can go back, you can see your notes, you can underline. It's not just about reading also for the sake of reading. It's reacting, uh, being able to communicate. Um, 
one of the great benefits of reading is being able to locate patterns in a text. And um, I mean, you're going to lose that ability yeah. if uh, you're only listening to certain things. And I think it depends on what level of reading you want to do. I mean, as we were talking about before we went on, uh, good luck reading a critical exegetical commentary by audiobook. First of all, I don't think they exist. Yeah. But I mean, th those things you, you you're not going to just fly through them. Uh, you're going to have to read and really think about what's being said. And if you're just listening, uh, it's just going to go straight over your head. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think reading still remains. Uh, the, the primary medium. Yeah. I haven't seen anything that convinced me otherwise. One of the things in, in a lot of the studies that we've done over the years through the podcasting work is just to appreciate that, you know, not all media is equal and it's not mm -hmm. designed to be, and, you know, books have their place, but you know, it, it's really hard to footnote an oral speech, you know, I mean, you just, <laughs> you don't, exactly. you don't do that. Uh, and, and to your point about the reason why critical commentaries are not in audio books. I mean, you got a million footnotes in those thousand pages on one book of the Bible. Exactly. Um, and, and, and frankly, that's nice. I mean, I, I like my center column references in my copy of scripture and you know, you, you miss that. Or I like that the ESV has footnotes that says, you know, this could also be translated this, or yep. it literally is that, and you can't do that, um, easily or not. It's just not the same. Um, so yeah, to your point, absolutely. Uh, at the same time, listening to another person preach is valuable because you can't pick up on nonverbal cues exactly. in, in a book. <laughs> so you and know, I wish I could in the biblical text sometimes. Uh, I yeah. wish I could hear the tone. Exactly. Yeah. Wouldn't you like to hear the tone of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount and mm -hmm. stuff like that? I mean, if I could pull up a, a YouTube video and watch it, that'd be fantastic. Um, so yeah, it, it just the, the media media each each medium is different. And I think they they lend themselves in a variety of ways. Obviously we believe in podcasting and we've been doing it for a while. Podcasting is different from a radio program, even though at its core, it's kind of the same, but it's just the media itself is in a nuanced way different and same way with a TV program or something. You just, you do it differently than you would any of the others. And so now we're sort of getting into theories of mass media and all that stuff. But at the same time, I mean, it's to appreciate the differences I really like to listen to podcasts while I mow the grass mm. and it's just, I feel like I'm kind of redeeming that time. Otherwise I'd just sort of be driving around in a giant square. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I also find that I, I retain stuff and I, I associate the things I listen to with where I was in my progress mm -hmm. of cutting the grass, which is kind of weird. But that's interesting to me. And, and, you know, people come up to us and they say, I listen to you while I'm running yeah. and I'm like, well, I'm glad you're running because exactly. I'm, I wouldn't be there running with you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, um, uh, so I don't know. It's just, it's special. It's different. I know some guys who work really well with something on in the background. Mm -hmm. I'm not that person. Like if I'm in this room studying, mm -hmm. but if I'm cleaning the house or doing some menial thing, I do like to have something on in the background. So, you know, if you can sort of redeem your time and make a commute or some other menial task, be infused with some meaning because you are playing a, an audio file or, you know, something like that in the background. I mean, that seems like a good thing to do. Sure. And I, I mean, one of my close friends, uh, he listens to things like, um, I talked to him the other day, he's listening to the Sherlock Holmes stories. And yeah. there was, you know, as he's mowing the grass, he's listening to this story on audiobook. But there's this beautiful moment in there he was telling me about where Sherlock makes this statement about God that just opens up. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I, I think reading doesn't have to be. I believe that reading fiction and history and biography and all of those things are very important for ministry not mm. just preaching, but ministry. Mm. And um, 
audio book. I mean, with the book, I will listen to the books like that on audio book. Um, obviously, because honestly, <clears throat> I mean, I guess I could drive and read a book at the same time, but it wouldn't be very safe. Uh, I have done it, but <laughs> uh, yeah, so <clears throat> I think it's about finding what works best for you, though. I mean, there may be, it's, I mean, I'm a limited person with limited skills. There may be a person that can listen to something and absorb every bit of it. Mm -hmm. I'm just not that guy. Yeah. And, um, but I do think that there is still something about reading that uh, mm -hmm. I would just encourage anybody not to, put one medium against the other and say, you have to pick this one or this one or this one. Yeah. I think it's a yes to all of them. We yeah. need to listen to sermons. We need to listen to podcasts. We need to read books. And so if you're a younger minister, it seems overwhelming because it's like, well, how do I have the time to do all of those things? And for me, it just sort of comes in, in phases. I mean, sometimes yeah. I'm, I'm heavier on podcasts than other times in listening to them. And sometimes I watch more sermon videos than other times. It sometimes it depends on how much uninterrupted free time I have doing this or that, you know, or what, I mean, it's just, or, or sometimes there's a series that somebody preached and I want to hear how they did it, mm -hmm. but I'm not always preaching that series or, you know, whatever. I mean, sometimes I don't have good books on this or that. So I'll listen to sermons about yeah. it instead. Uh, so just sort of let that naturally, my advice would be let that naturally just sort of organically happen and utilize yeah. whatever you have in the meantime. I think that's right. I mean, you and I both know, I mean, we're about, I think we're both about 15 years in now. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we're not completely new to this thing yet. We've kind of got an idea of how we want to do things how we we've tried and experimented and we've talked through the years, you know, what works for you, what doesn't, uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I would just encourage whatever, whoever, uh, in this area, you, you just got to find what works for you. Yeah. Like my day, the way I listen to and, and squeeze in listening to certain things might be different than the way you do it. You just have to find the way that works for you. Listen to a lot of different people and see what works for them. And then just, hodgepodge it together, take what works and put it together. And, um, you know, sometimes when I'm in the car, I listen to an audio book. Sometimes I listen to a podcast. Sometimes I just listen to the radio. It just depends. And, you know, don't, mm -hmm. don't force yourself into something and end up stressing yourself out even more. Uh, just do what works for you and kind of listen to yourself in that sense. And, um, I think you'll see the benefits of it. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I think that pretty well sums it up. There are benefits to every form of media. Books still rank, uh, hold the rank in terms of effectiveness. Uh, you know, it's easier to go back and cite, you know, all of that stuff. You can, I, I think you can engage with it a little better, whether you read the physical book or do a digital book. I mean, we can have that conversation and we have in the past, right? Uh, either way it, it works out the same. If you can highlight a written something that's, you know, written text, then I think that works. Um, and then yeah, incorporate podcasts and videos and things like that a as you can. And, uh, I, I think that's the way to do it. <laughs> It'll all help you in the long run. I mean, it, you're, you're not wasting time in any of the ways it's just which is most convenient for you to do right now, or which makes the most sense for you to engage and utilize right now. And you go exactly. from there. Yeah. And you know, when you, when I think about, you know, just a book versus a podcast or a sermon, all preparation goes into all of them. I mean, yeah. we do podcasts, we preach sermons, but when you hold a book in your hands from a press, like there is, I don't know how many hours and how many people have been looking and sifting and editing and checking sources. And it is just, there is just something about that book itself. It's hard to replicate that type of preparation in a sermon or yeah. Oh, yeah. in a podcast. Yeah. So it's just the level of it is just different in my mind. <clears throat> it is the representation of, years of work yes. <laughs> I mean, 
thousands of hours. If you think about when, when that started as a seed thought in the heart of the author mm -hmm. and then where it has gone since then to, to get into your hands, I mean, that's thousands of hours worth yep. of work. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, books still hold, hold rank for sure. Well, uh, this has been a good discussion. I've appreciated it very much. We'll wrap up if we need to say any final words or anything here in just a second. Let me remind you, Preachers in Training is a part of the Light Network, a network of podcasts designed to encourage your soul and enlighten your mind and empower your faith. Celebrating, as of next year, 2023, 10 years. And I hope you'll stay tuned for all the variety of ways that we intend to celebrate coming up. And I want to put that bug in your ear. All of the previous episodes of this podcast, as well as the other podcasts available from this network, are available on our website for free, thelightnetwork.tv. There is a little magnifying glass search button there, and if you type in an author's name or a host name or a guest name or a topic, there's a pretty good chance that you will come up with something. And uh, at 2,600 episodes... Uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of, of water under our bridges here at the light network. So go check that out. I think you'll benefit from that. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, we encourage you to subscribe to it. So you never miss an episode. Just search preachers in training, either in your favorite podcast app, or in the case of this podcast on YouTube, because we are producing a video version of this show. We've been doing that now for several years. Just search Preachers in Training or my name, Robert Hatfield, or The Light Network. Any of those will bring you to The Light Network's YouTube channel. And uh, if you hit that subscribe button, you'll never miss an episode. Click the bell on YouTube and you'll be notified whenever we release a new episode of video. We love to hear from you. And uh, this episode is brought to you by our listener requests. And so if you have a listener request, you can uh, email me, preachers at The Light Network. Dot TV, or go into our Facebook group, search Preachers in Training on Facebook, and uh, you can uh, be a part of that group there. We have great discussion in between the episodes on a variety of topics, sometimes uh, resource recommendations, things like that. It's also a great place for you to recommend episodes for the future of Preachers in Training. We appreciate you listening and being a part of this episode today. Brad McNutt is a wealth of information and uh, does a great job over there at The Book Club. You ought to go check that out at thelightnetwork.tv. Reviewing a different book every episode, uh, sometimes books of the Bible through the canon series, canon of scripture. Other times, most of the time, every other week, uh, three weeks out of the month, uh, re reviewing some other kind of book. And you follow a cycle there. You want to just tell our, our listeners here what that cycle is? Sure. We, um, we follow, it begins, as you said, with the canon, the canon of scripture. And uh, we've made our way, we're in Paul's epistles now from Genesis all the way through this 10 years. And uh, so we do Which that. Is wild. Wow. That's crazy to think about. <laughs> but uh, we do that because even in a show about books, we need to be reminded that there is a book that still reigns supreme for which we interpret everything mm -hmm. else. Um, <clears throat> then we move into the classic books. And for me, classic uh, is one that's been around. It's lasted a generation or two and had some impact that makes it a little classic in my mind. And then we move into a contemporary book, one within the last 20 years or so that's proved beneficial. And then cutting edge books uh, kind of hot off the press. And, uh, you know, some of those books will turn out to be timeless. Some of them will turn out to be you know, they're addressing a need in the moment. Yeah. Uh, but either way, I think they're beneficial at the time uh, mm -hmm. that we talk about them. And so it's been fun. I get to interact with a lot of people and been introduced to a lot of books and authors by the people who listen. And uh, so I've, I've probably learned a lot more from them than they have from me. <laughs> Incidentally, we have, uh, because we, we got some requests about this, we have grouped all of the Canon episodes together. And so if you go to thelightnetwork.tv slash Canon, That'll take you through. And as we're recording this uh, during the summer of 2022, yeah, as you said, we're in, uh, you've already gotten through Philippians. Uh, all of those Canon episodes are all grouped together there. So thelightnetwork.tv slash Canon is how you can uh, hit up Brad's reviews or overviews is maybe a better term of uh, the Canon of Scripture episodes on the book club. So that's pretty cool. Good stuff. 
Well, hey, thanks for being on this episode today. Uh, final words, parting thoughts. Is there anything you just thought of during my commercial thing that we need to mention before we go? I mean, I just appreciate you having me. And the, the person who, who has asked this question and um, mm -hmm. for anybody who doesn't like to read or says that, um, you know, because that may, I don't know that that's behind the question, but it may be there. And it may be that somebody listening kind of feels this way. I just want to encourage you that I did not like reading. Mm. I, I went through high school, middle school, high school, preaching school. I can say that now because I'm out of it. <laughs> and I, had, <laughs> I think I read maybe two books the whole time. Wow. You can learn to love to read. Mm. And uh, I would love to be able to talk to you about that. But there are plenty of other sources that can help you uh, a lot better than I could. Uh, but I think reading is uh, just... Uh, I gave a whole lecture on it at a place. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, it, it is special and it doesn't have to, to be a burden to you. And if it is, and we can help you, that's what we want to do. Good books at the light network TV is how you contact Brad, by the way. <laughs> and I know you, you frequently get, uh, you know, Hey, what do you recommend for this? Or, you know, that kind of thing. I think you get a lot of those kinds of emails and you often share that kind of information over on the book club podcast. So uh, yeah, check that out. Brad's a good resource. I do that all the time. What's what commentaries on Exodus <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> so, you know, it's good stuff. Hey, we want to thank you for being a part of this edition of preachers in training. Thanks to our listener who requested today's topic and hope you'll join us next week. when We're going to dive back into the old mail bag and uh, we've got another listener requested episode ahead until then though. I'm Robert Hatfield. Let's go preach the word.